Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the, the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Abby Chang, and she is a 2001 graduate of cell biology. So welcome back, Abby. Glad to have you. Thank you, Kate. So tell me a little bit about what you did here at Vanderbilt. So um, as you said, I was a graduate student in Chris Wright's lab in the Department of Cell Biology. Um, I studied the molecular mechanisms of how the left-right axis was formed during development in frogs or Xenopus labus. So you gained several skills while you were here getting your PhD training. Are there skills that translated to the job that you currently have now? Well, you know, having a PhD or a postdoc per se wasn't a necessary requirement for being a volunteer program manager at a nonprofit, um, but I would say the critical thinking skills that I learned helped me solve problems, both non-STEM pro problems as well as STEM-related problems. So non-STEM problems would be um, stuff like, what is the best training that we can do to train our mentors so that they're awesome mentors to excite and engage our participants? Um, a a, a STEM-related problem would be, we have no more of this very, very critical material that is needed for this science activity. What can we use to to modify it so that it could work? Do we need a paper clip? Do we need, you know, <laughs> total MacGyver, you know? So, right. so having that background um, helps a lot. Um, and most importantly, it allows me to engage with the volunteers because many of them are undergraduates that are thinking about their next step. Do I want to go to graduate school? Or graduate students that, do I want to do a postdoc? If, if so, do I want to do it in an academic setting or an indus industry setting? So I can speak more to that and, and hopefully try to guide and foster and, and maybe even mentor them as yeah. well. So um, that's great because you use some of those skills, but were there skills that you needed to gain after, when you started the job that you didn't really feel like you had from your training? Definitely. So uh, we had talked about um, me being a mom. I think um, being able to speak to our participants and their families that are not necessarily knowledgeable in STEM to begin with. Um, sure. So speaking with them, communicating with them, interacting with them, um, from all age groups, from K to 12th grade and, and, and their parents as well. Um, I think being a mom helped that because there's no on the tr job training. You, you, it's a lot of trial and error on what works, how do you engage a child, uh, what do you say to a child of a particular age. You're not going to say um, what you're gonna say to a fifth grader, what you're gonna say to a kindergartner. Sure. Um, and it relates very well with the parents too, because it's not just the, the participants that we engage, it's also the parents. Right. Um, they know that I'm a mom and, and they like me for it. It's, we can talk about, oh, I have a fifth grader at home and she wants an, a, an iPhone. And how do you deal with all the, the rules and the expectations around that? So um, I think that's, uh, it, it, that's one thing that has uh, that I needed to gain that I didn't get during a <laughs> postdoc or a graduate student. <clears throat> okay, good. Tell me what are the steps that you took, um, I guess, from your postdoc to get your current job? So we moved from uh, San Francisco when I was at University of California at San Francisco um, in 2007. In 2008, I had two young kids, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. I was a stay-at-home mom, and I didn't necessarily seek out to become an out-of-school time informal educator, or I'm gonna work at a nonprofit. I was looking to jumpstart my career after being a stay-at-home mom and the primary caretaker. What can I do? Well, why don't I volunteer? And so I volunteered at Science Club for Girls um, at the Newton site, which was a Saturday program, because I was the primary caretaker, so that my husband, when he came home from work, he could take care of the girls while I 
volunteered. Yeah. Um, I did that for about two and a half years. And then when the program manager was leaving, I applied and interviewed for the job. And um, I, I, I had an advantage because I knew the ins and outs of that organization because I was a volunteer at the very uh, lowest level, right. at the base right. level, I guess I should say. Right. That's great. So I'm sure you have to do a little bit of networking in your role. What are some of the ways that, <clears throat> excuse me, what are some of the ways that you network? Um, I would say in the last year I have networked quite a bit. Um, a lot of it is through Science Club for Girls. Um, we are a nonprofit, so we have a lot of funding um, events that we um, do. Uh, so I meet a lot with uh, venture capitalists, donors, um, and so I it, uh, um, network with them. Um, but also we had a a book launch at Simmons College, which is a, a all women's college in Boston. And um, I interact with a professor and, and we're thinking about writing a paper about informal education. So I'm excited about that because I've written scientific papers, but sure. not about informal <laughs> um, education. Right. Um, conferences, um, uh, I in, interact with other educators um, in, in STEM. Uh, what else? Uh, trainings. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, Sci Girls Train the Trainer. Um, Sci Girls is an Emmy Award winning um, show on PBS that increases um, the girls' excitement about STEM. Yeah. So I, I became a, a Sci that's Girls great. Train the Trainer this year. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. So Thanks. you mentioned being a mom. What are some of the strategies that you do to manage your work-life balance? Oh, uh, <laughs> as you know, it's it's not really a balance. It's like a seesaw when work is really difficult. Um, you know, sometimes you have to let you know uh, things slide on the on the personal side, and and also conversely on on the professional side. Um, my husband is great. He's he's he works really well. We're we're a great team. Um, I do have to say I, I am a part-time um, worker at uh, Science Club for Girls. I'm part-time staff. Um, I work 20 hours a week and only seasonal. So I work during the school year because it is linked in sure. with um, out of school time um, education. And um, so I'm able to pick up my girls from school. But there are some times when I have an email or a phone call and I've said to my girls, I just need 30 minutes to make this phone call or 30 minutes to send out this email and then I'm back to being mom again. So in some ways that is kind of <laughs> a balance, is a give and take. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just as your last qu question, um, what do you wish you would have known when you were getting your PhD training that you know now? I wished I sought out more mentors. Okay. It's interesting. Um, I consider myself a mentor now. Mm -hmm. I wish I did the same when I was going through graduate school and postdocs, both, both at the peer level um, where you can talk about experiences, best practices, and also cheerlead, you know, we're in this together. Um, but also um, at the supervisor level, I always had my mentors, um, the, the lab PIs, but I wish I sought out other PIs and said, and have a con candid conversation what do you think I need to do? Can I, can I do this? What, what do you think I need to work on to succeed in whatever field it is, X, Y, Z? You know, okay. I, I wish I sought out that a little more. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming. We, we're glad to have you back. So. Thank you so much, Thanks. Kate.